Cleveland Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with Macklin's Jim Marbella. We're at Frederick's Restaurant for the press conference for Frankie Gavin and Bradley Skeet. With me I've got trainer Tom Chaney. How are you Tom? Really good, thanks. Yeah? Trip alright down there? Yeah, on the train. Not going to drive to London. Much, much better. Easier? Easier, much easier. Absolutely. Uh, Tom, how much of a setback in Frankie's career was that defeat to Leonard Bundu back in August? Um, from, from where we was, it was a, a big setback, as in the boxing world. Um, a setback for Frankie and me as a team, you know, it hurt, it hurt a lot, thought we crept over the line. But surprisingly, it didn't take us long. I think it took me longer. Frankie came back into the gym the week after and he, he had a, you know, this ain't happening to me again. Do you know what I mean? And he really stepped up. I could just tell he had a different sort of spin on him, totally different uh, sort of attitude. And, um, you know, the loss, people say the loss has done a good, it's got to, we've got to wait for that. We've had a fight on Friday, took him two rounds. I'm not going to jump around about what that is, the level of the opponent, but he'd done it in a, in a really good way. So we're happy with that and we'll move on to the ski fight. Um, with this fight obviously being on a, a big show on the 29th in London, uh, what was the main reason you took that fight in Wolverhampton? Uh, really, the, the main reason was we was offered um, to go on to the Liverpool bill uh, really late and it was really stacked out and everything else but we needed to get that fight out of the way the opponent was 6-2 or something like that I just wanted to get that fight out find that sort of range and just work on a couple of things that we've been working on in the gym and um, see where it got us and two rounds so it was uh, something that we wanted it together What does Bradley Ski offer as an opponent to Frankie? Uh, what, what are his weaknesses do you think you can exploit? Do you know um, I, I'm a sort of coach that um, I don't. I watch other opponents and everything else, but I know what my boxers' pluses are, and I know Frankie's pluses are way ahead of, of Bradley's. So I concentrate what um, Frankie's best at, and things that he's, he hasn't used for a while. We've brought stuff back to, to what we do. We're going to get crafty again as a southpaw, and um, really put some numbers together, throw more punches. This is obviously a rolling camp for you from, from the last fight yeah. straight into this one and we're about four weeks away from uh, from the fight, I think just a little bit over so um, just be back in the gym straight away. Yeah well today was a day off as such and it's felt okay that it's coming to the press conference. We're back in the gym at 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, get back in, no hand problems uh, which was fine, we didn't plan on punching um, this week anyway uh, because just in case we had any, any hand problems. We go away to camp on Thursday. We go to the, the, the 34 Signals Regiment in um, the state side Coventry. We go there Thursday, and uh, all our sparring partners are booked and and things like that ready. Um, since Frankie Gavin turned professional after a, a great amateur career, big things were expected from him. How much of the real Frankie Gavin have we seen so far in his pro career, in your opinion? Uh, flashes, flashes. He's had. Um, you know, he went away uh, from home in Birmingham, which was advised because it was best for him. And um, Anthony Farnell, uh, done a great job with him, really loved him, which you need to do with Frank. He's got to have lots of love around him and everything else. But uh, circumstances got on top of him with his, his nan passing away, his mum had a serious illness, which is, is over now at the moment. And um, the lure for home was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think. Uh, the mishap of going to the tips is a, is a great team to go to, do you know what I mean? They're really experienced, they come to the table with massive experiences, but it was moving out of one flat into another one, and it just didn't work for him mentally and all that. He was he was a broken man, really, mentally, at home and everything like that. It just didn't suit him, because he'd been away since a kid, travelling the world. He'd been around the world twice, and then Sheffield every week. I think it just built up, it built on top of it, and then having kids and that, it just got on top of it. Well, it's an intriguing contest uh, from both sides on the 29th, so that's it. We'll look forward to hopefully a, a cracking fight yep. between the two. We'll give you a cracking fight. Well, best of luck in that camp. Thank you. Thank you very much.